أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صدق الله العليج العظيم ڈیئر آل السلام علیکم او پال آف شو آر این گڈ شیپ بائی دا گریس آف اللہ اینڈ مے اللہ پروٹیکٹ یو فرام آل ایولس کمنگ ٹو آور اینڈ آف کرائنالوجی and the drugs part of that what was assigned to me is something very important as usual and nothing is unimportant on pharmacology so a person who is specialist in this field of endocrinology is known as endocrinologist You study these endocrines in physiology also some, something in your biochemistry and you have got the basic knowledge about it. Part of that to be covered by me, it is about the steroids. A common word, steroid. Also known as corticosteroids, adrenocorticosteroids, glucocorticoids, glucocorticosteroids. I mean, these are different synonyms. Hope all of you have got your notebooks and a pen with you and just note these things too. Different names given to the these steroids they are, are widely used in world rather they are misused for certain reasons nowadays they have got very burning debate whether they be used in this viral disorder the recent prevailing or they should not be given so number of people they have advised it to be given like very recently it was written in one literature that the treatment for this covid 19 it is discovered and the drug is you know dexamethasone very common drug used dexamethasone by the name their name decadron the drug is not very new it is used in number of conditions rather earlier dexamethasone so as a from pharmacology point of view we go through different parts of uh, this these drugs as concerned the history coming to the history that starts from 1930 where the adrenal extracts were used and their effects seen uh, observed by the scientists in 1930s their effects on the blood pressure say different body systems and then in 1950s this cortisol or cortisol the natural one hormone 
its effects, its physiological effects, its effects, its use in medicine. They were well studied by few scientists. Name of one is Philip, and they observed the effects on different body systems and they got Nobel Prize. There were three people. Few from the Mayo Clinics and other from Zurich. So they got the Nobel Prize of Physiology and Medicine. In 1950s also the, it was tried to have some synthetic uh, steroids. So around five or six they were also discovered. At that time they were in 1950s main indication was for say the for arthritis are uh, there different applications. So also applications on the skin disorders. They were given more importance at that time. Then in 1970, around 1972, corticosteroids are the steroids for asthma. Uh, they were discovered, one well known was the Beclo methasone, Beclo, just note down please, Beclo, B-E-C-O, C-L-O, Beclo methasone, steroid. Steroid have got very well, I mean their, their name is very common, steroid. Mr. So and so is given steroid, or Mr. Or the athletes, they are on steroids. When they are given to enhance performance, some of the steroids, like the anabolic steroids. So the term is known as doping. You have already been told about is what is doping and what is dope test. Just please again note it down, what is dope test. So it is compulsory when a person is in field com competing, so his steroid level should be checked. I mean, this test is, is must. So it is related to, I mean, the, Mr. So and so is steroid positive or the dope test is positive or the negative. So after that, he or she is allowed to come in the field. Steroids, as the name indicates, they have got the basic steroidal structure. Steroidal structure. The basic structure, it is composed of around 17 carbon atoms. There are three six member rings attached together, cyclohexane, and there is one five member ring, cyclopentane, chemical structure of this, the steroids. So on this basic structure, changes are brought. So the characters may differ from one to another. Basic structure, there are three cyclohexane and one cyclopentane rings. So steroidal structure. The natural one is the cortisone, cortisol, hydrocortisones. 
they are the initial one, they are the natural one. They are among the highly studied medicines and used almost everywhere in body. For number of disorders they are used while uh, in spite of remembering all those clinical applications of the steroids better to remember those conditions where they are not to be given so going through the different slides I'll discuss them and will emphasize we are not to be given and we are to be given. Something more about that, you are all familiar if the steroids, these are from the adrenal cortex and adrenal cortex that has got different parts and different hormones they are being produced from their adrenal cortex. So after that, we will go through different slides and they will be discussed uh, accordingly. Here are the learning objectives. While talking about the learning objectives, how the corticosteroids they work, they work at different for different uh, disorders and how they work it is among the basic teachings the general mechanism of trust and all of you <coughs> may have that no idea about I mean, how the drugs act they act on the receptors and like that we will show you so it's the picture about the corticosteroids, how they act, it has already been shown at different stages. Then you should be able to classify them. Classification is of say three types classification according to their effects on body systems, intermediary effects or salt retaining effect or their androgenic activity and classification may be according to the another classification is the adenocortical steroids the which of them are the glucocorticoids are further divided into which are natural and which are synthetic and other group in this classification is the mineralocorticoids. Further, another way of classification, whenever we are supposed to, we, we have to give some question, we should also tell students what type of classification is required an intelligent student may ask this question. So what type of classification? Another type of classifying these steroids is based on the duration of action like the short acting and intermediate acting and long acting. Then the clinical applications we should be able to know where to use, how to use, what quantity be given, what should be the route. You should be able to manage that, use this, clinical applications. And you have already been told that better remember where not to be given. I give you some of the examples. As a principle, in case of viral disorders, they are contraindicated. 
in case of fungal disorders they are contraindicated in case of tuberculosis they are contraindicated this is the basic principle but at the same time in certain conditions acute conditions they are they are even in these condition they are advised then toxicity you know the steroid corticosteroid they are toxicity you know if there is over production or over use of corticosteroid so what will happen you have gone through the the cushing syndrome rather earlier and you are familiar with then again contraindication just repetition so number of conditions where they are not be given so you should me it is not easy to remember all the corticosteroids the number of steroids they are available in the market but the prototype you must remember say that you should know hydrocortisone cortisone adenocorticotropic hormone they some you know how they are formed and they are controlled one common thing uh, hormones they are under feedback mechanism control from hypothalamus releasing factor and you are familiar with that axis coming to the next slide here you see a beautiful picture of this adrenal uh, adrenal gland so different parts are there different zones are there zona reticularis fasciculata glomerulus and from different parts different hormones are being produced on your left side you see in the mineral corticoids you will study this aldosterone and you have rather studied it their aldosterone antagonist and corticosterone their mineral corticoids mineral corticoids you know better because you study it rather earlier sodium retention where it is required to uh, to maintain blood pressure then glucocorticoids the natural one cortisone corti cortisol and cortisone then andro androgens produced over here estrogens testosterone and also catecholamines are released from medulla return over here adrenaline and epinephrine not epinephrine so they all have steroidal structure basis structure you have been told after that next it's a well known picture it may be in your mind uh, under stress so hormones they are <coughs> released act on pituitary from pituitary adrenocorticotrophic hormone is released and then that's acting on adrenal cortex from their cortisone so it's the feedback mechanism it is being controlled so this picture is in routine there in your mind you should be able to know not only this this sort of treatment where the hormone deficiency there it is known as hormone replacement therapy note this stone hrt hormone replacement therapy coming to the after that we come to the next slide here you see this cortisone it has diurnal circadian cycle at different timings its uh, natural level is there at 6 am it is the maximum level of cortisol you have studied it rather in physiology 
and at 12 a.m. it is the minimum the level is at 6 it has a, to the maximum level then question here two main groups classified glucocorticoid corticosteroid agonist it is written agonist it means the antagonists are also there and in your viva names of antagonists are also asked from you name of antagonist so the glucocorticoids examples are given over cortisone or cortisol then prednisone and sisters of prednisone or prednisolone then methyl prednisolone then another glucocorticoid is triamcinolone triamcinolone then beta methasone betnovate a well known drug betnovate tablets are local application among the mineralocorticoids aldosterone fulrocortisone here about the antagonist so you should <coughs> remember names of some of the antagonists receptor antagonists corticosteroid receptors in the, in the, they are on left side glucocorticoid mifepristone 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 glucocorticoids is an antagonist receptor side then now the mineralocorticoid spirono spironolactone where have you studied this spironolactone note this question the naply renone then where the synthesis of this corticosteroids they are inhibited you will study this these drugs some also some ketoconazole ketoconazole this is a, an antifungal drug ketoconazole also inhibit so interaction is important then aminoglutathione aminoglutathione then metirepone remember the antagonist name names of antagonists they are also in your viva here is well known picture how the drugs act this picture is shown rather earlier in the initial lectures how the drugs act in general so go through it and and try it draw it and label it it's something important see right not only here you have already studied in detail in ca in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and also in case of uh, ulcerative colitis you have been <coughs> taught about it recently by Dr. Freya Zishan. How does she is just, just VN. Just try it later on. Steroid is bound to corticosteroid binding globulin. These hormones they are binding to corticosteroid binding globulins in the blood but enters the cell as the free molecule. They are entering in the cell in the frame. In the cytosolic, in the cytosol, they bind to receptors and further transport it into the <coughs> nucleus on right side to the nucleus. The receptor is bound to stabilizing proteins. Receptor is bound to stabilizing protein that is the HSP90 and several others which are released when the complex binds a molecule of steroid. Coming to the next picture. Again, 
The steroid receptor complex enters the nucleus as a dimer, binds to the glucocorticoid response element on the gene and regulates gene transcription. From there onward, the resulting messenger RNA is edited and exported to the cytoplasm again for the production of protein that brings about the final response. I again say you have to draw this picture, something very important repeatedly shown in your literature. Classification. It is this classification is according to duration of action. First one here it has given short acting to mediate medium acting. Cortisone or the hydrocortisone, then prednisone, prednisolone, methyl prednisolone short to medium. Then the intermediate acting is the triamcinolone, very effective triamcinolone in case of skin disorders, eczema, like that condition, triamcinolone. Then long acting beta methasone. You are all maybe familiar with Petnovit. Beta methasone. <coughs> Then the dexamethasone, which is given big importance nowadays, dexamethasone, the uh, a cheaper drug, but due to uh, a shortage and availability, so uh, I have come to know that the its price is highly increased. So it's something bad. Dexamethasone. Then here another classification is according to the route of administration. Here upper one, here you see the intramuscular, again triamcinolone. Triamcinolone I have read, it is also inhaled somewhere, then intramuscular and intravenous, it is written as uh, intravenous beta methasone, hydrocortisone, methyl prednisolone, prednisolone. Then those which are inhaled, these are also asked in your viva, inhaled are used for nasal sprayer. Well-known example is the beclomethasone, beclomethasone, then budesonide, very important. Certain other examples are there, again, in here, triamcinolone again is here. For oral use, cortisone, dexamethasone, Methyl, prednisolone, and prednisolone, oral use. Topical, almost all of them may be used topically. Topical. Metabolites, they're mainly with glucuronic acid or combined with sulfate and pair in urine. This intraarticular, again you see on right lower side, intraocular, intraarticular, sorry, or not ocular, intraarticular in the joints. It has got very old history. Giving the steroid intraarticular, now around, 19, around 1950, methyl prednisolone and tribesolone. These injections are given and they have safe health for a few months. Topical steroid examples are given right on bottom at lower side, beta methasone, hydrocortisone, triamcinolone. 
He said this classification according to the root of administration. Next, few lines about the kinetics. The fresh comers, the new students who joined us after the good time of clearing their second year, for them they should remember there is difference between pharmacokinetic, prokinetic, prodrug, they should note it down. Pharmacokinetic of synthetic steroids, corticosteroids, as written over here, they are synthesized from cholic acid and that cholic acid is obtained from cattle or steroid saponins found in plants. So they synthes synthetic, they are obtained from cattle and also from plants. As concerned their absorption, most of them, not only the synthetic, they are rather they are rapidly and completely absorbed orally and 90% bound to plasma protein, it means they have high protein binding affinity. And they penetrate ba different barriers. These synthetic, they have rather longer half-life and duration of action is so longer and the metabolism is by microsomal oxidizing system. And well known, you know, the way to get rid of a drug of a substance is glucuronic acid combination or combination with <coughs> sulfate as created by the kidney. on various organ effects or various system effects. Metabolic effects, <coughs> metabolic effects, they stimulate gluconeogenesis. When the gluconeogenesis is being stimulated, it means the glucose level is increasing. Another thing written over here, is stimulate insulin secretion, it is something opposite. Then again, stimulate lipolysis and lipogenesis. Here, it is the net increase is fat deposition. You all know about the fat depo deposition. There is redistribution of fat deposition, you know. If someone is giving these steroids, so the fat will deposit at different body areas. Then the catabolic effects. In general, these glucocorticoids, they have got the catabolic effect. There is negative nitrogen balance. The muscle mass, there will be wasting. And here you see the lymphoid tissue. Uh, there is regression, involution of lymphoid tissue. Lymphoid tissue involution. Connective tissue, that's also affected. Fat redistribution is there, skin that becomes fragile and bruises may occur. So there is overall wasting in connecting the bones, osteoporosis that is facilitated. Next line is catabolic effect on bone. Given for a longer period, so osteoporosis may be. Calcium loss is there. If the children are given their growth is affected. 
Next, the uh, effect on immune system. You know they are immunosuppressant. Here in the recent viral disorder, people say the immune system should be stronger. But these drugs are they are immunosuppressive, but also advised by some people they should be used and they are helpful in the respiratory distress. Immunosuppressive effect. As written over here, they inhibit cell mediated immunological function. And these drugs are lymphotoxic and another you have already been told there is involution of the lymphoid system, the tissue. Lymphotoxic. Another thing is the delay in rejection reaction. So because of their immunosuppressive effect, the steroids organ rejection, to avoid organ rejection, they are advised. So they, if they are not taken in proper doses, and they may have very toxic effects. Coming to my experience, people lost their uh, vision and they lost some of them. They lost their kidneys because of the toxic effects of these steroids given to people just for to treat baldness or to treat that uh, refractive errors people go through the uh, sort of surgery and then they take these uh, steroids and heavy dose and they have their toxic effects. Then inflammation, how the inflammation is controlled, here it's written <coughs> neutrophils, they are increased, lymphocytes number that goes down, eosinophils, there may be rather eosinophils, pinea, basophase, monocytes, the number that goes down. Another thing related to anti-inflammatory effect of the steroid, it is the migration of leukocytes which is inhibited, polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Their migration is inhibited. Then anti-inflammatory effect inhibit you know, well-known picture previously shown at different types of the inflammation. You can see over here, these are the steroids and they have got anti-inflammatory. There, there's a big group, you have been taught about that, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So where they differ, you should be able to know. What are the difference between aspirin and the steroids? as anti-inflammatory agents. Anti-inflammatory effects. Phospholipase is the first step, A2, that is inhibited. So the further inflammatory process that is inhibited, COX-2 inhibitor, like interleukin-2, level will go down interleukin-3, and then PAF. What is PAF? You have to see it from your literature. In this anti-inflammatory affairs, when the steroids, they were introduced to treat rheumatoid arthritis, your rheumatic disease. So it was something dramatic effect, dramatic effect. So it was considered as a loss treatment. Uh, and the final treatment to treat the uh, rheumatoid arthritis at that time, but later on other drugs you know, like methotrexate, they were added and they have <coughs> better effects. Anti-inflammatory. Where anti-inflammatory effect, you can also add, there is lysosomal stabilization, lysosomal 
stabilization. Then you can also add in this anti-inflammatory effect. May I may you may be asked later on, and you are asked to the anti-inflammatory effect lysosomal. Also, the hyperemia, hyperemia, uh, uh, that that decreases effect on hyperemia. Edema is relieved. Next, other effects, various effects written over here. Again, <coughs> vasoconstriction when applied to skin by decreasing mass cell, de mass cell degranulation. It means the mass cell stabilization. So, vasoconstriction will be there. Again, it has been rather earlier told, capillary permeability, that decreases. It also capillary permeability decreases, okay, that is that can be that is also related to anti-inflammatory effect. Then other effects, sodium retention and water load <coughs> that increases. And uh, next one written over here are the effects on the CNS. Uh, behavior changes are there. There may be anxiety. There may be euphoria, dysphoria, people, I mean. These steroids are misused. So, even in different prescriptions. So, they have come under the control drugs. They should not be given by medical practice, by the pharmacy without your prescription. So they also have seen a higher th on the higher centers they have got the effects. Another thing written over here is the gastric acid secretion that stimulated. It means if the ulcer is there, uh, there are already hyperacidity problem. So they should be avoided. The delay, the healing process is delayed by steroids, stimulate gastric acid secretion. So the ulcer formation uh, that's promoted, so not good in acid peptic disease. uses, you have already been told that number of uh, sites they are used, multiple sites when you are unable to understand the problem, people they start giving it. Among the clinical application, for the diagnosis and treatment of disorders, replacement therapy is a well-known name. Diagnosis and treatment of disorder the adrenal function. And treatment of a variety of inflammatory and immunologic disorders. Again, among the uses, you know in Addison's disease, proper production is not there, so as replacement therapy. Next, it is written over a congenital adrenal hyperplasia congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Then after adrenal lectomy, during and after adrenal lectomy. Crossa syndrome. This is primary generalized glucocorticoid resistance. Diagnosis of Cushing syndrome. The dexamethasone suppression test is known for it. Cushing syndrome diagnosis. Non-adrenal uses. Those were adrenal. Allergic reactions. Allergic reactions. So there is 
angio neurotic edema or there is anaphylactic shock something very important so they are used uh, they are at hand well, when you are giving certain drug in the emergency uh, your tray the these steroids are there to avoid anaphylaxis even with the bee stings then in case of contact dermatitis in allergic in urticaria allergic rhinitis to avoid drug reaction or to treat drug reactions and in serum sickness number of clinic are there then collagen vascular disorders collagen vascular disorders collagen vascular disorders sle joint cell arthritis here is something rheumatoid arthritis very important rheumatoid arthritis as you have been already told that when steroids given for this purpose they were considered as the final treatment for rheumatoid arthritis then another arthritis is there then polymyositis polymyalgia rheumat rheumatica if not all remember two or three common problems skin disorders all these steroids they are very important their clinical application is something very what a dermatologist is going to do he or she goes goes on changing this the steroid which is more effective so among the skin disorder it is the atopic dermatitis and seborrheic dermatitis xerosis what is xerosis dry skin lichen lichen simplex chronicus skin does then mycosis fungitis mycosis so fungal pemphigus another pemphigus next this is a neurological disorder in case of if you suspect a cerebral edema is there so they are helpful they are helpful in multiple sclerosis abbreviated by ms in case of acute conditions of eye acute uveitis allergic conjunctivitis choroiditis optic neuritis there will be various ocular applications then in the thyroid disease they are also indicated in malignant exophthalmos and subacute thyroiditis subacute they are helpful among the pulmonary disorders you know it is the first child the baclomethasone inhaled now taken as the first child to treat the asthma bronchial asthma other indications aspiration pneumonia prevention of infant respiratory disorder syndrome nowadays given for acute respiratory distress also in sarcoidosis pulmonary disorders in git you have recently already you have been told that i have gone through this lecture rather two lectures of inflammatory bowel disease ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease the steroids are given then non tropical sapru subacute hepatic necrosis then the renal disorders nephrotic syndrome what is nephrotic syndrome there is protein urea then certain infections if there is acute respiratory distress may be given for short period whenever you are giving these corticosteroids or steroid they must be tapered off gradually next indication is sepsis 
than a leaven. Inflammatory conditions are bones and joints, arthritis, bursitis, tenosynovitis, may be applied locally. Is other. Then hemo, hematologic disorders, hematologic disorders, blood disorders, hemolytic anemia, allergic purpura, leukemia, lymphoma, idiopathic thrombocytic penic, cytopenic purpura, multiple myeloma, blood disorders. If not all, at least remember two or three. Then miscellaneous indications, you have been ra rather told earlier. To avoid organ rejection, prevent the prevention and treatment of organ rejection. Then among the antimatics you were taught in certain condition, they are helpful to avoid this chemotherapy induced chemotherapy induced vomiting. You know when chemotherapy is there, vomiting is a big problem on them. Certain other very potent drugs are also available to avoid that. Then stimulation of lung maturation in fetus, very important. And in case of hypercalcemia, also helpful in mountain sickness. What are the other drugs? You should also recall for mountain sickness. Very important. First one, the iatrogenesis. What is iatrogenesis? All of you should know about it. I mean the drug. Cushing syndrome. The disease produced by giving medicine by a doctor or a quack. Then moon-like face, you are already familiar with it. Buffalo hump, visceral fat deposition, skin thinning, stry, bruising, punctate acne. Acne is a big problem with them. Increased growth of Fine years. Hirsutism among that verses. Then there may be insomnia, appetite may be increased, weight gain, muscle wasting when used for a longer period, hyperglycemia, latent disease, latent diabetes may become frank. Then ketoacidosis, really osteoporosis, osteoporosis, you have already been told about it. Aseptic necrosis of hip and wound healing is delayed. So many, so big, uh, this is a typical pec picture. You are already familiar with it. Other complications, you have been told that nausea may be there, peptic ulcer, precipitation, myopathy, dizziness, hypomania, even depression, even once you leave it. Benign intracranial hypertension, growth retardation, it is repetitive. Then cataract is also a problem with it. Cataract. If steroid is given in every dose for longer period, then glaucoma is also very intraocular pressure that increases. Then thrush, oral thrush. When you inhale it, it's a, also does oral thrush. It's fungal infection. If you give big doses of steroids for a longer period, the endogenous production is suppressed. For that reason, they are gradually tapered off. Be careful. Here again, different pictures are there. Special precautions. You have already been told about it. Contraindications you have been told. Then the next lecture will be <coughs> given to you by, inshallah, Professor uh, Mariam Rashid. 
خدا حافظ